It began with silence, the kind of silence that stretches across the midnight sea, broken only by the roll of waves and the distant pulse of tides. But at 11.45 in the evening, Pacific Daylight Time on Thursday, September 25th, 2025, the ocean floor far west of Bandon, Oregon, betrayed its calm. 231 kilometers offshore, at a depth of barely 10 kilometers beneath the seabed, the crust of the Juan de Fuca plate cracked with sudden force. Instruments registered a magnitude 5.9 rupture. Within hours, two smaller quakes followed, each magnitude 3.0, both 10 kilometers deep, each within the same offshore corridor. Most on land felt nothing. Yet in the hidden world beneath the Pacific, something had shifted and the question lingered. What exactly was the Earth telling us? The rupture occurred within the realm of the Blanco Fracture Zone, a sprawling transform fault that slices east to west between the Juan de Fuca and Pacific Plates. The Blanco is not merely a line on a map, it is a jagged, restless scar, an active gash in the oceanic crust where blocks of Earth grind past each other in opposite horizontal directions. To envision its behaviour, Picture two titanic slabs of stone pressed edge to edge, sliding sideways with enormous pressure until friction fails and one lurches past the other. That lurch is an earthquake and the September 25th event was one such release. The mechanics are deceptively simple, yet awe-inspiring in scale. In the seconds before rupture, strain had been accumulating silently. The rocks along the fracture were locked, grinding slowly, heat and tension mounting. Then abruptly the locked patch gave way. The crust snapped forward, radiating seismic waves outward in concentric arcs. First came P waves, the fastest, rippling through solid rock like sound through steel. They would have reached seismometers on shore within less than a minute. S-waves followed, shaking the crust sideways, slower but more destructive if they had struck populated ground. Finally, long-period surface waves rippled along the ocean floor itself, though attenuated before reaching the coast. For most residents of Oregon, the event passed unnoticed. For the Earth, it was a convulsion, sudden and irreversible. Why here? Why now? To understand, one must trace the tortured history of the Juan de Fuca plate. It is a small survivor of the ancient Farallon plate, a slab of oceanic crust born at the Juan de Fuca ridge and dragged eastward beneath North America. To the west, it is still being created at a spreading center. To the east, it is swallowed whole along the Cascadia subduction zone, where its descent beneath the continent has been locked for centuries. To the south, where Thursday's quake struck, it is shredded by the Blanco fracture zone. Imagine the plate as a sheet of glass, stretched at one edge, jammed under a massive block at another, and twisted sideways along its base. Eventually, cracks must form. The 5.9 was one such crack, the Earth's way of adjusting geometry under impossible strain. The Blanco itself is no gentle seam. Satellite bathymetry reveals a landscape scarred by deep valleys and ridges offset by tens of kilometers, proof of millions of years of horizontal grinding. Right lateral strike-slip motion dominates, standing on one side of the fault and looking across, the opposite block moves to the right. This sideways tearing is fundamentally different from the vertical thrusting expected on the Cascadia megathrust. Where Cascadia holds strain in silence, Blanco hisses and snaps in frequent bursts, releasing moderate to large earthquakes every few years. In 1994, it produced a magnitude 7.2 event, a reminder that it is capable of far more than Thursday's moderate shock. Energy calculations place the September 25th rupture in sobering perspective. A magnitude 5.9 quake releases roughly 2 trillion joules of energy, equivalent to hundreds of thousands of tons of TNT. It is not enough to devastate cities, but it is far from trivial. If the rupture had been beneath land, near urban centers, buildings could have suffered. Offshore, its energy dissipated into the ocean, absorbed by water and uninhabited crust. And yet each such quake is a brick in the larger structure of tectonic stress, part of a system whose ultimate consequences will be measured not in fives or sixes, but in the eights and nines. Indeed, the looming shadow over any offshore Oregon quake is always Cascadia.
The Cascadia subduction zone, stretching more than 1,000 kilometers from Northern California to British Columbia, is locked, silent, and storing energy. Geodetic GPS stations across the Pacific Northwest show the continent itself deforming as the plate boundary grips tighter. Every century a few millimeters of convergence accumulate, every millennium that adds up to tens of meters of strain. When the fault finally fails, it will do so catastrophically. The last time it happened was January 26, 1700, a magnitude 9 event that dropped coastal forests into tidal mudflats and sent a tsunami racing across the Pacific, recorded in Japanese annals as an orphan wave. Does a moderate quake on Blanco signal that Cascadia is near? Scientists are careful here. Transform quakes like Thursdays are not thought to directly trigger the mega thrust. Their motions are different, their stress fields partitioned. Still, they serve as constant reminders that the system is alive. Stress does not vanish. It migrates, redistributes, accumulates. The Blanco quake was not Cascadia's roar, but it was Cascadia's whisper, and whispers matter. The aftershocks tell their own story. Two magnitude 3.0 events followed within hours, each at the same shallow depth of 10 kilometers, both within a few dozen kilometers of the main rupture. Such echoes are the crust's way of readjusting, as smaller locked patches surrounding the initial slip are disturbed and give way. Seismologists often watch these closely, mapping how aftershock patterns reveal the geometry of the fault. Here they suggest that a short segment of the Blanco system had ruptured, leaving nearby sections to settle. No further strong shocks followed for now, but on a fault zone as active as Blanco, for now is always temporary. To expand the perspective, consider the entire tectonic jigsaw of the Northeast Pacific. The Juan de Fuca plate is caught between three giants, the Pacific to the south and west, the North American to the east, and the Explorer to the north. The plate is being created, destroyed, and sheared all at once. The Blanco fracture zone marks the grinding frontier with the Pacific. The ridge to its west continually births new crust. Cascadia swallows it to the east, and to the north the plate splinters again near the Savanco and Nootka fault systems. Few places on earth see such a concentrated chaos of boundaries. It is no wonder that this region is seismically restless. Historical records reinforce the point. Seismographs have captured numerous Blanco events over the last century, often in the magnitude 6 to 7 range. Mariners have reported feeling seas pitch unexpectedly. Instruments on shore register tremors in clusters. Some events rupture only small sections of the fracture zone, others cascade along multiple segments, producing larger shocks. The 5.9 of September 25th fits comfortably into this pattern a moderate reminder that the fracture zone is never fully at rest. And yet, for all its activity, Blanco is a paradox. It releases often, but in doing so, it distracts from the greater silence next door. Cascadia does not shake every year or even every decade. Its hazard is hidden, cumulative, and far more devastating. This contrast is what makes Thursday's quake so chilling. It is noise near the silence, a moderate rupture, openly visible, drawing attention to the locked monster that remains invisible. One may ask, how can such forces be monitored or their danger predicted? The answer lies in technology and patient science. Seismometer arrays across Oregon and Washington capture even the faintest tremors. GPS stations track continental drift at the precision of millimeters. Offshore, experiments like the Ocean Observatories Initiative deploy cables and sensors on the seafloor itself, measuring strain, heat flow and acoustic signals. Together, these tools paint a picture of constant motion, of a system winding itself ever tighter. But prediction remains elusive. Earthquakes cannot yet be forecast with certainty. What can be said is this. Cascadia is locked, its time will come, and Thursday's quake was part of the same restless plate that one day will fail catastrophically. Until then, each offshore event deserves scrutiny. The 5.9 on September 25th will likely fade into statistical tables, remembered by scientists and forgotten by most. But it carries a lesson worth repeating. The Pacific Northwest rests on borrowed time. Beneath the quiet coastline lies a clash of plates that has already rewritten landscapes and will do so again. The sea hides the scars, but the faults are real, and the fractures are spreading their stories in seismic pulses. In the end, the September 25th quake is not Cascadia's reckoning, 
but it is Cascadia's reminder. A reminder that the Juan de Fuca plate is still alive, still straining, still cracking. A reminder that the Blanco fracture zone is no passive seam, but an active fault carving the ocean floor in grinding spasms. A reminder that silence along the megathrust is not peace, but tension. The ocean held its secrets again after that night, but one day it will not. The ground beneath Oregon and Washington will convulse, the sea will rise, and the long quiet will end. For now... The 5.9 stands as another warning pulse in the darkness. A tremor offshore, unheard by many, but telling a story older and larger than us all. The Earth's plates are in motion, their fractures speak in earthquakes, and their silence speaks louder still. The question is not whether Cascadia will break, but when. And every small quake on Blanco is a whispered reminder that the countdown is already underway. If this deep dive into Cascadia's restless geology gripped you, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and be sure to tap that hype icon so this report can reach an even wider audience. Your support helps bring more investigative science straight to you.